Hi, and welcome to another photo link video. This one is going to be on HDRI or uh, HDRI, yes, high dynamic range imaging uh, using PictureNot 3.0. We're going to do another one with uh, uh, HDR or HD tools, but uh, this one's going to be on PictureNot 3.0, which is a phenomenal program, and how we in interface it to GIMP to uh, really get spectacular photographs. Um, first of all, when you download PictureNot, uh, what you do is you get a single zip file. Uh, it does not have an install program. That zip file is extracted uh, into a directory, a directory of your choice, and you simply click on the EXE or right click on it and tell it to uh, send a shortcut to the desktop. It also comes with a series of plugins and uh, those plugins are called, um, they're under the plugins directory, they're called um, HDR Shop, uh, which you extract into this HDR Shop directory, and you have the plugins that go with it. Um, but basically, um, when the program's up, you have PictureNot 3.0. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, high dynamic range images. Uh, it seems like everybody is after those images that look uh, kind of radioactive. Uh, the detail is enhanced. The color is uh, kind of strange. The skies are like real bizarre and things along those lines. Um, that is not a, a, even though it's an HDR image, it's not uh, what HDR images were designed for. What HDR images basically do is they take a series of overexposed and underexposed images, combine those with a um, with a uh, normal image to uh, take the shadow detail out of the overexposed images and the highlight detail uh, of the underexposed images, combine it to a normal image to get an image of much greater dynamic range. Um, see, normally a um, a digital camera has a dynamic range of around 4,000 or so, the equivalent of four, a difference of 4,000 between the uh, highlights and the shadows, where the human eye has around 100,000. Um, if you can combine images, you can push that into the 60 or 70,000 range uh, by using uh, HDR, which uh, it, it increases it many times over. Uh, don't pin me on that. I'm not sure it's 60 or 70,000, but maybe that just sounds good, but I believe that's what it is. But anyways, we have our program. We have it installed, and then we're going to talk about dealing with it in GIMP. But remember, to get the uh, radioactive images, we're going to talk about that in a later video. And by radioactive, that's not a photographic term. That's just what I call them. I mean, they look like they're, you know, electric. Um, those are basically a result of uh, local contrast enhancement and detail enhancement and things along those lines using local contrast, um, uh, local contrast, uh, how do you say it, uh, generation of the HDR instead of global contrast. More on that later. But anyways, what we do is we come up here, uh, we click on uh, File, okay, and we say Generate HDRI. Now we could have clicked on this icon as well. And we say add. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to here. And I've got three images or five images. I have a normal, an overexposed one, an overexposed two, an underexposed one, underexposed two. By underexposed two, I mean underexposed by two uh, EVs, which are uh, exposure values. That can either be uh, overexposed by having the uh, uh, shutter speed or by uh, you know uh, uh, you know opening the lens up by a uh, you know a, a full stop. So I say open. I'm presented with a new dialog. For the moment, we're going to take these uh, defaults down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to enter in our BIOS or a um, bias, not BIOS, bias. Uh, so if we're two under here, we're going to put a minus two. That's two uh, EVs under. And uh, here is normal, so that's going to be a zero. Here is uh, one EV over, so we're going to put a one. Here's two EVs over, so we're going to put a two. And here is uh, underexposed by one, so we're going to put a minus one. And then I'm going to say OK. Now what it's going to do is it's going to 
take these images and combine them to produce the uh, uh, to retrieve the shadow and the highlight detail with with the normal exposure so that you get a much higher dynamic range. Now this is going to be presented to us on the screen. Now the first thing that you have to understand is an HDR image, an HDRI image, um, basically is not designed to be output on a monitor or to a printer. Uh, it's just a collection of all of the dynamic range. It has to be converted to an LDR image through tone mapping in order to um, produce that actual image or, you know, to produce the output. So here what we've got is we've got our image. Now we've got a few more minutes here, so what we can do is I'm going to put view on here and I'm going to say uh, fit image to view. Now it looks rather dark, but they, they don't look like uh, you want them to be finally. So I'm going to come over here to edit, I mean to image. I'm going to go into my tone mapping. Now we've got a lot more to talk about on this. But uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my EV value. Uh, here what we can do down here is we can talk about dynamic compression, uh, the output, which here we'll put as an 8-bit, uh, saturation, contrast, whatever. And then if um, I just say OK, what it does is down here we will now have an LDR um, image produced from this HDR. And uh, this is ready for us to utilize or take into GIMP. So with that, we're going to move into the next video. We're going to talk about this in more detail. Uh, but this is a very brief introduction to uh, high dynamic range imaging uh, and tone mapping into uh, low dynamic range imaging for output to a, uh, a printer or to the screen. But uh, please uh, go to the site, www.photolink, that's F-O-T-O, L-I-N-Q dot com uh, and look at the additional videos in this one in better detail along with the other ones and also um, uh, uh, if you have images you'd like to work on send them to J-O-E-G uh, at F-O-T-O L-I-N-Q dot com that's Joe G at photolink dot com and we'll work on them and uh, have a good night thank you